And this gavel is off to Senator Lara again. Thank you. We're going to, um, in file order, now invite uh, Senator Amber Lopez to please come forward. Uh, Ms. Lopez, you have two items. That's AB 559 and AB 1207. You have waived presentation on AB 1207. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Perfect. Then we have mm -hmm. AB 559. The floor is yours. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members, today I present AB 559, which will be allowed the Department of Fish and Wildlife to conserve the Mona butterfly. This bill will minimize the cost to the state. This bill does not directly mandate any action and therefore to save the butterfly. Sometimes that shows that tourists of the monarch has contributed to uh, up to $1 million to local cities and counties economy, such as the city of Goleta. Is that because of economic benefit that California makes the effort to save those beautiful creatures? Thank you. Witnesses in support. Witnesses in opposition. Finance. The Department of Finance is neutral on this bill, um, but would note a concern that it creates cost pressures to the extent that um, the Department of Fish and Wildlife chooses to partner with another um, entity um, to, to undertake these activities. Thank you. Uh, comments or questions from the committee? There's a motion by Senator Mendoza. Uh, Senator Lopez, would you like to close? I just uh, thank you and asking you for your vote. Thank you. Secretary, please call the roll. The motion is do pass to the Senate floor. Laura? Aye. Laura, aye. Bates? No. Bates, no. Bell? Aye. Bell, aye. Hill? Leva? Aye. Leva, aye. Mendoza? Aye. Mendoza, aye. Nielsen? No. Nielsen, no. Uh, that is currently 42. We'll wait. To, uh, we'll keep it open to allow other members to add on. Thank you, Senator. Thank Lopez. you so much. Next, we have uh, Assemblymember Patterson. Mr. Patterson, you have one item. It's a due pass recommendation, AB 1353. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, and Mr. Chairman and members. Um, we'll be uh, very quick here. Uh, first of all, appreciate uh, uh, the recommendation to do pass. Uh, it, the, the bill brings equity to how the state of California treats blind vendors who service California's uh, road stops and the blind vendors uh, who service our state buildings. Uh, a constituent of mine, Gary Crocker, brought to my attention that there is a disparity between blind vendors who operate at state buildings and those who operate at safety roadside rest areas. Uh, Caltrans has been charging blind vendors an additional fee for power supply costs on top of the 6% set aside that they already pay. So for many vendors, this fee is over $200 a month. On the other hand, blind vendors operating at state buildings must only pay a 6% set aside. By clarifying that the, Cal the Caltrans is responsible for paying the utility costs, it will ensure that all participants are, created, are, are, are treated equally and fairly and will improve the lives of these blind vendors who operate at our safety roadside rest areas. Uh, at an annual cost of $126,000, this bill is a marginal cost compared to, obviously Caltrans has, has a very large budget, uh, but the, the cost of not uh, passing this measure will have real uh, effect on the lives of uh, these individuals and the businesses that they operate. And so we're asking uh, for your support and, and uh, uh, passage of this. We have uh, uh, blind vendor Gary Crocker and Tristan Kelly here. Uh, to testify and Thank support. you. Witnesses in support. Yes, uh, Chairman Laura, Laura, thank you for uh, letting us come here today and esteemed committee members. Um, Assemblyman Patterson did point out one of the things I wanted to point out that the, the cost to the Department of Transportation is nominal compared to the cost to the blind vendors of the Business Enterprise Program. It is my uh, speculation that there are, eight, there are 18 current vendors running uh, rest area vending at the state's rest areas right now. As many as nine vendors could be displaced if this bill is not passed. Um, the blind community has an unemployment rate of about 70%, and this, this program for the blind is extremely important, and I ask that you please vote yes on this bill. Thank you. Thank you. Additional witnesses in support. Good, good morning. My name is Tristan Kelly, um, current QLDC member and former uh, California Vendor Policy Commission member. 
Uh, in, in a 2006 Caltrans report uh, titled The Future of SRRAs, uh, the National Corporation of Highway Research Program gathered that the, absent of, the absence of California SRRAs uh, directly resulted in 52% increase in uh, shoulder-related accidents with uh, many cars parked along the uh, side of the road highways. Um, uh, also, California roadside safety risks reduced accidents by 3.7% overall saving uh, 1,500 lives in California and over $148 million annually. Um, with 15% of all highway-related uh, car accidents, the primary or secondary reason was driver fatigue. These California roadside rests um, allevi alleviate driver fatigue. In the summertime, we sell uh, cool beverages to keep you cool. In the wintertime, we sell hot beverages to keep you warm. Uh, our number one um, our number one product sold is uh, customer satisfaction. Hmm. Um, historically, the vending industry, uh, the cost of electricity is taken on by the building owner or building manager. We offer services and we, and we provide snack time. After nine pi afternoon pick-me-ups are a staple for us. Uh, we're not asking uh, for something new to come about. Um, up until 2012, uh, this was already in place. Um, the, wealth, the Streets and Highways Code was rewritten at that point. And we're not asking for something new. We're just asking to remedy uh, something that was misrepresented. Uh, I urge this committee to uh, pass this on and keep uh, our neighbors, friends, family, and visitors to this state safe on the highways. Thank you. Additional witnesses in support. Yes, good morning, Mr. Chairperson Laura and committee. My name is Tom Linker. I am a blind entrepreneur vendor in the state of California and a blind disabled veteran and ask your support for this bill. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Additional witnesses and support. My name is Joni Patchy, and my husband is a roadside rest vendor. I'm also a blind vendor, but um, we are in support of this bill. Sometimes we don't make a profit. Thank you. My name is Robin Patchy, and I'm in support of this bill. Hello, my name is James Howie. I am a rest area vendor at Hunter Hill, uh, 80 westbound, uh, just before Vallejo. I am a vendor that's going to be severely affected if this uh, continues, uh, this levy against us. Uh, I'm below the poverty level already, and so I please pass this, and uh, I hope this will help us uh, stay in business. Thank you. My name is Lori Lammer, and I'm in support of this bill. Thank you. My name is Mike Miller. I'm employed by one of these roadside arrest vendors, and I'm in support of this bill. Thank you. Additional witnesses in support. Witnesses in opposition. Finance. Department of Finance is opposed to this bill because it would redirect limited highway maintenance funds to this program. While the cost associated with this bill would only represent a very small percentage of the Caltrans overall maintenance budget, costs associated with operating revenue generating services on state facilities are more appro appropriately borne by those receiving the revenues. Um, we feel that the actual cost of providing the service, including utility costs, should be included in the price of the product supplied, as is done with all other operating expenses. Thank you. Comments or questions from committee? Senator Leva. I just wanted to thank the author for bringing this bill forward, and I wanted to thank the uh, roadside vendors who are here and let you know that my family, especially my children, have enjoyed the snacks and beverages that you provide over the years as we've made trips. So thank you very much for what you do. Thank you. Senator Bell. Um, I think that um, these kinds of programs should be accommodated throughout the state government. Um, uh, most local governments, state, uh, city governments, uh, provide um, opportunities for um, individuals that have various disabilities to 
participate in um, these kinds of contracts, vendor operations. Uh, it's not about uh, making an impact on the state budgets, it's about doing, doing what I call the right thing to uh, increase employment among individuals with disabilities, which is right now um, only about 15%. And uh, I applaud the assembly member for bringing this to us. Uh, we should, in any kind of discussion on um, fiscal issues related to Caltrans, always consider these kinds of uh, programs. And I intend to do so uh, in the special session. Thank you. Thank you. I'll take that as a motion, Senator Bell. Uh, Secretary, please call the roll. The motion is do pass to the Senate floor. Laura? Aye. Laura? Aye. Bates? Bell, Bell I Hill, Leva, Leva I Mendoza, Mendoza I Nielsen, Nielsen I. Mr. Pettison, we're going to keep this item open until all other members. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman and members. Appreciate this very much. Thank you. Thank you. Members, we're going to um, take a moment to review our um, items that have waived presentation until we get some more of our authors here. We're going to move to um, AB 40 by Assembly Member Ting. Witnesses in support. Witnesses in opposition. Finance. I'm sorry. AB 40? Right. Um, Department of Finance is opposed to this bill because it limits the state and local government's fiscal flexibility with regards to toll bridge programs as a means to generate revenue. We um, note that Caltrans does not currently charge pedestrians or bicyclists for, a bridge, for bridge passage. However, this bill precludes any potential future plans for the state to charge such tolls to fund capital projects facilitating pedestrian and bicycle bridge um, passage. Thank you. Comments or questions from the committee? Seeing now, without objection, we'll move this item to the suspense file. Moving on to AB 1534, witnesses in support, witnesses in opposition, finance. We don't have a position on this bill, um, but note that the Board of Equalization estimates that it will incur approximately 150000 in annual costs to administer the bill's provisions. Comments or questions from committee? Seeing and hearing none, without objection, we'll move this item to the suspense file. We are uh, moving to AB 392 by Speaker Atkins. Witnesses in support. Witnesses in opposition. Finance. The San Diego River Conservancy indicates that any reporting costs resulting from this bill are minor and absorbable. Thank you. Comments or questions from committee? Seeing and hearing none, without objection, we'll move this item to a suspense file. Moving on to Assemblymember Weber's items. That's AB 97. Witnesses in support. Witnesses in opposition. Finance. The Department of Finance is opposed to this bill because it would require additional programming of CMIPS 2 at a time when the system is already facing um, higher priority changes, including the possibility of having to pay overtime per federal regulations. This bill is estimated to result in one-time costs of $6 million, $3 million of which is general fund, um, to program CMIPS 2 um, and one-time costs of approximately $1.1 million general fund um, for two years and 4.5 positions to implement the changes. In addition to automation costs, this bill could generate costs associated with providing workers' compensation coverage to manage health care providers. Thank you. Comments or questions from committee? Seeing and hearing none, without objection, we move this item to the suspense file. AB 427, witnesses in support, witnesses in opposition. Are you in support? Yes. All right. Um, this is Jenny Kim on behalf of California School Board Association and in support. Great, thank, thank you. you. Witnesses in opposition. Finance. We don't have a position on this bill at this time, but we would note that by eliminating the housing allowance from military personnel's income, this bill makes more military families eligible for state subsidized child care and early learning programs. Um, this increased eligibility would likely create Prop 98 and non Prop 98 general fund cost pressures in the state's child care and early learning programs. Additionally, because the bill reduces the military family's stated income, it also gives them priority within that system over other non-military families. Thank you. Comments or questions from committee? Seeing none, we'll move this item to the suspense file. Moving on to Senator Gatto's item, AB 210. Witnesses in support. Witnesses in opposition. Finance. 
We're opposed to this bill, both because it would result in additional costs not reflected in the 2015-16 budget, and because it's inconsistent with the policy of incentivizing um, the traveling public to carpool no matter the time of day, since Southern California freeways experience significant congestion outside of the peak commuting hours. Thank you. <laughs> so true. <laughs> uh, with that objection, we'll move this item to suspense file. Moving on to Assemblyman Gomez's items, AB 211, witnesses in support, witnesses in opposition, finance. Department of Finance is opposed to this bill because it would require the state to implement collective bargaining in all 58 counties, even if um, the coordinated care initiative were to become inoperative. The CCI is intended to be a complete package of reforms designed to improve care coordination for individuals who are eligible for benefits under Medicare and Medi-Cal allowing statewide collective bargaining, sorry, statewide bargaining responsibilities to function separately from the entirety of the CCI erodes the comprehensive nature of the initiative and places all fiscal risk of the CCI squarely on the state. Thank you. Uh, comments or questions from committee? Seeing and hearing none without objection, we'll move this item to the suspense file. AB 908, witnesses in support, witnesses in opposition, finance. We don't have a position on this bill, um, but note that in 2016, um, the EDD currently projects the distribution of 723 million of paid family leave benefits under current law. And the department estimates that this bill would more than double the amount of benefits um, paid in 2016, resulting in a $752 million increase. This is, however, based on the current utilization rate and does not include any sort of increased usage for the program. Assuming a 10% increase in usage, the increase in benefits paid would be 899 million. Um, the EDD also estimates one-time IT programming costs of 844,000 from the disability fund and ongoing costs of 47,000 to implement this bill. Thank you, comments or questions from committee? Seeing and hearing none, without objection, we'll move this item to the suspense file. Moving on to Senator Melendez's item, AB 218. Witnesses in support, witnesses in opposition, Finance. The Department of Finance is neutral on this bill because it could provide long-term savings to the state from the avoidance of future maintenance and rehabilitation costs if the highway segments are in fact relinquished. Thank you. Uh, comments or questions from the committee? Seeing and hearing none, uh, without objection, we will move this item to a suspense file. Moving on to a Senator Daly's item, AB 219. Witnesses in support, please come forward. Well, is there any witnesses in support first? Please come forward. If you can allow the support to come first, and then we'll call the opposition. Uh, Sam Merlino, again, California Field Ironworkers Labor Management Cooperative Trust in support of the bill. Thank you. Mr. Chair, Member Cesar Diaz, on behalf of the State Building and Construction Trades Council, just want to point out that the DIR does have a prevailing wage rate for a uh, ready mix driver. Those are set by counties, not exactly the Teamster rate, which is the highest rate possible. Uh, there has been estimates provided by the California uh, Transportation Department indicating that these drivers are getting paid the lowest wage rate possible, which is about $15 an hour, and they compared it to the highest wage rate possible with 54. But there's a, there's a lot of in-between there. Uh, the in-between is that the industry does just pay $15 an hour. It pays a range. And there's also unionized companies as well that already pay the Teamster rate. So we believe the costs are by far lower. Uh, we're working with the department to address those issues and those discrepancies that they have in the analysis. Uh, I would respectfully urge your support when that information is provided. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair, members, Caitlin Vega for the California Labor Federation, also here in support for the reasons stated. Thank you. Witnesses and opposition. Mr. Chairman, members, Richard Markson for the Western Electrical Contractors Association, Associated Builders and Contractors of San Diego and the Plumbing, Heating, Cooling Contractors. The analysis points to substantial state costs to both state and local agencies. We're opposed on the policy. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members, Dave Ackerman representing the Associated General Contractors. On the basis of cost, uh, our members have indicated that with the passage of this bill, uh, our uh, bidding costs to virtually uh, all uh, state and local agencies will increase. Uh, it's Caltrans itself has estimated uh, the cost range between 30 to 50 million just on Caltrans projects, and much of that is due to the administrative cost of just administering the act. Uh, that same cost falls on general contractors and will be forced to 
reflect that in our bids on the projects. Uh, I did hear uh, Mr. Diaz comments about let's look at the, at the dollars, let's look at the impact, and we're happy to uh, work with uh, 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 DIR and uh, with Caltrans on refining those cost figures because uh, we understand the bill is targeted to suspense during that time. We're happy to do that. Suspense pro pro uh, process, I would encourage you all to continue to work together with uh, the building trades. I think we may may not be able to find some sort of common ground, especially on the cost stuff, but I think it merits the whole point of the suspense files to allow us to continue to work out these issues. So look forward to working with you on, on this item. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Charlie Ray with the California Construction Industrial Materials Association and Trade Association for Ready Mix Concrete and Aggregate Producers. And uh, we continue to oppose the bill and uh, think it appropriate for the committee to look at the cost, but we look forward to working uh, with the author and everyone on, in the future. Thank you, additional witnesses in opposition. Marty Hansberg with Holiday Rock, we oppose the bill. Julie, Boyle, Julie Broyles on behalf of Associated Builders and Contractors of California, also in opposition. Chairman, members, uh, quick spiel. Uh, my name is Todd Dragna with Robertson's Ready Mix. We're the leading producer of uh, Ready Mix Concrete in the Southern California area. For nearly 40 years, with over 1,800 employees in 40 locations, We've delivered and continue to deliver to hundreds and thousands of public works projects throughout the state, which include Caltrans, municipalities, schools, prisons, water districts, and other transportation. I'm here to just share with you that this bill will raise our costs significantly to deliver to uh, the public works projects. We, uh, we have closed the bill. Thank you. Mr. Chair and members, Bruce Mignani on behalf of the California Concrete Contractors Association and California Precast Concrete Contract Association uh, in opposition. Thank you. Gavin McHugh on behalf of the Cal Portland Company. We are also opposed. Nicole Rice, California Manufacturers and Technology Association, also opposed. Mr. Chairman, I apologize for being out of order. Stu Helford, Northern California Teamsters Construction Committee in strong support of the bill. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, Shane Gussman, I'm also a little late and apologize. Uh, we're in strong support of the California Teamsters Public Affairs Council. Thank you. Jared Ramirez of Associated Ready Mix Concrete uh, opposed the bill. Thank you. Uh, additional witnesses in opposition? Seeing none, finance. Caltrans indi indicates that this bill could result in tens of millions of dollars of additional costs to the state highway to count for concrete work contracts done annually by its division of maintenance. Um, additionally, Caltrans estimates that implementing this bill would result in increased operations costs of over one million state highway account for at least seven new regional labor compliance officers to inspect and monitor hauling activities and prevailing wage requirements. Um, we believe that there would be additional costs to other state departments. Those are just the, the quantifiable Caltrans costs. The Department of Industrial Relations also estimates a cost of at least 127000 from the State Public Works Enforcement Fund to cover an additional position to monitor and enforce the new prevailing wage requirements. Thank you. Comments or questions from committee? I do. I just Senator uh, Bates. Uh, to enter on the record, I think as we struggle to find additional revenues for the deficit in our uh, transportation maintenance accounts, we have to take a real long, hard look at these uh, bills that will go into suspense in terms of the cost implications for that very difficult uh, uh, channel charge that we're all uh, involved with now is finding additional revenues to meet uh, the uh, maintenance account. And when you look at bills like this, it immediately you know, however you get the cost down, when we're talking about something up to $50 million annually, uh, we're almost uh, defeating our purpose. So I just would like to enter that uh, formally, that we take a long, hard look when these bills are in suspense, uh, that they might be held in there until we really uh, work out the issues with our deficit in our maintenance account for transportation. Thank you. Without objection, we're gonna move this item to the suspense file. We have Assemblyman uh, Wilk here. Please come forward. Mr. Wilk, you have AB 240. It's a candidate for suspense. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Today I present to you AB 240, which seeks to allow recipients of Purple Heart, Pearl, uh, Pearl Harbor Survivor, Ex-Prison of War, Congressional Medal of Honor, Gold Star Family, and Legion of Valor license plates, free day use entry to all parks within the California State Park System. 
Currently, there is a distinguished veterans pass, which entitles the holder to access all basic state park systems uh, operated facilities, including entry free of charge. And that is available for veterans who are 50% uh, disabled, um, ex prisoner of war or Congressional Medal of Honor. All this bill would do would extend uh, the benefits of the free day pass to those uh, categories that I previously outlined. California State University Sacramento recently conducted a survey and found that state park visitors spend an average of $4.32 billion per year in park related activities. And the average park visit generates $57.63, including $24.63 inside state parks and nearby communities. Uh, this measure just also serves as an important role to, for those veterans who use nature as a therapeutic remedy, which happens quite often. And AB 240 would allow those veterans to take advantage of our beautiful state parks to heal physically and emotionally. Uh, again, this is just a small way to honor those that have uh, served and have sacrificed for our country. And I respectfully ask for an I vote. Thank you. Witnesses in support. Nicole Wardleman, on behalf of the Ventura County Board of Supervisors, we're very supportive of our veterans and appreciate the introduction of this measure. Thank you. Witnesses in opposition. Finance. Department of Finance is opposed to this bill um, due to the approximately 200,000 of lost state parks and recreation fund revenue annually. The state parks and recreation fund is currently in structural deficit as expenditures exceed revenues. And so any revenue increase, decrease, excuse me, creates state fund, um, general fund cost pressures to backfill lost revenue. Thank you. Comments or questions from committee? Seeing and hearing none, uh, Senator, Wilk, um, Senator Wilk, would you like to close? Again, this this uh, there's about 8,400 license plates. I'm not sure, you know, how much it will be used, but I just do know that this is an excellent way to honor our military heroes. And again, there is uh, economic benefit to the state by people accessing the park. And uh, despite the uh, analysis by the State Department of Finance, which we just received on Friday, I believe this will be an econo economic plus uh, for the state as well as honoring those who have sacrificed for our nation. So again. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Without objection, we're going to move this item to suspense file. Members, we're going to keep on working our file. Uh, next item is, uh, the next items are Assemblyman Jones Sawyer's items, AB 224. That's AB 224. Witnesses in support. Witnesses in opposition. Finance. We don't have a position on this measure, but we note that it does likely create a state reimbursable mandate in the tens of thousands of dollars and some minor departmental costs. Thank you. Uh, witness uh, comments or questions from committee? Seeing and hearing none, without objection, we will move this item to a suspense file.